there are many pros and cons to any RV or trailer you might get, but I'm gonna talk about the pros and cons of the Scamp 13 foot, and in particular, the Scamp 13 foot 2021 that we have right now. We've had this for about a year. I think that's given us an ample amount of time to figure out uh, what really is good about it and what really is not so great about it. Okay, so let's hit the pros first. The number one pro and the reason that we got the Scamp in the first place was the weight. It is extremely light. It's a fiberglass shell and a lot of the stuff inside is made of fiberglass. It's very, very versatile in terms of what vehicle can pull it. Now we could have gotten a very large and well-equipped um, RV or trailer for the exact same price or even less than what we paid for this But that would have required us to get another car another vehicle a tow vehicle that could tow a heavier weight And we just didn't have the money to do that. So this is extremely lightweight and our Subaru is a 2017 It's nothing special. It's a four-cylinder and it pulls it with no trouble at all And there's all kinds of SUVs that could pull this so there's just a lot of options So if you are somebody who has a small SUV SUV or wagon, I, I think this would probably work for many of them. So that's very appealing and that's the number one reason that we picked this camp in the first place. Another pro of this is it's got a really attractive retro design. So the design hasn't changed much since Scamp started making these in the 70s and we are elder millennials who enjoy that retro feeling and um, it's really, really cool looking. It just looks like a giant retro jelly bean rolling down the highway. Another pro is that it's extremely common. Compact. I mean, obviously, if you're going to fit something you can live in with multiple people in a basically 10 foot by 6 foot space, the actual inside is 10 by 6. If, if you're going to fit that many people in such a small space, it has to be designed pretty well. And I feel like the inside of this is utilized pretty well. I mean, of course, you can always make changes and you can make something better. But I think overall, it's compact. You need very little if you have this. So especially if you're used to camping in a tent, this is absolute paradise. All you have to do is pull up to a campsite and park. It's really, really well designed um, in terms of fitting a lot of stuff into a very small space and still having room to actually move. The Scamp is also really minimalistic. I can't handle a lot of extras and having an RV already is an extra or having a trailer is an extra. If you're looking for the least amount of trouble, this is a really good option because even if you get all of the options added that you possibly could, it's pretty simple to use. If you can't handle a lot of extra stuff on your plate, this is a good option. The the solid fiberglass body doesn't rust. This is another pro. I've heard nightmare stories about roofs leaking constantly um, just because of design and because they're on the road all the time. We've only had this about a year, but we've had no problems. And from what I've heard, it just doesn't happen. You just don't get leaks. The Scamp also encourages simplicity, efficiency, and necessity. You can only bring what you can fit. There's an aspect of this that I like because when you go on trips, there's a tendency, especially when you have kids, to bring everything with you. You just can't do that in the scamp. First of all, it won't fit, but then if you're pulling this with just a regular tow vehicle, like a a, just a car you cannot pull it safely with additional weight we have about a hundred or two hundred pounds extra that we can add after everything's been packed and that is it and so it kind of forces you to really think about what do you need and not to get like philosophical but it forces you to think about what do you need. A lot of the time, it's just basics. And that's, I think, why camping is so enjoyable and why having this camp is so enjoyable. Camping brings you back to what's important. The basics are important. Being outside, being with your family, having good food, sitting around a fire, just enjoying nature, doing what humans do best, which is connecting. The Scamp forces us to do that for sure. There are some garages that are tall enough to fit a Scamp. Ours is not because of the air conditioner and the tires. I've heard rumors that people that have a 2005 or earlier or 2015 or earlier, I'm not sure which, if they let out the air in their tires a little bit and don't have an air conditioner, you can fit it into a regular garage. So obviously, Obviously we don't have that, but I think if you have like an eight foot garage or taller, I believe you might be able to actually fit this in a garage. So that's helpful. Also, it's so small. This thing is smaller than our car in length and we park it in our driveway sometimes for extended periods of time and we've never had a complaint. Nobody has ever said anything. I think because it is cute and because it's small, um, you have a lot more flexibility in where you can put it when you're not using it. Rather than spending another 45 bucks a month or more to store it somewhere, you can keep it with you. Next. 
Pro. It handles extremely well on the highway. You can totally feel it when you're pulling it, especially if you've got a lot of extra weight in it, but it handles really well. We took this thing from all the way from the Midwest all over the Southern East Coast and never had a problem. It didn't ever sway. We never had a fishtail situation. We have driven this thing to Minnesota in the winter. We have driven this thing in the ice and snow and just haven't had a problem. Even pulling it with a vehicle that's probably not the best vehicle to be pulling anything, we've never had a problem. Another pro that we didn't utilize because we bought something that was already purchased and we were just on a wait list and we just took whatever we could get. You can customize your scamp. You can have them do pretty much whatever you want. Obviously there's limitations due to size and whatever materials they're using, but you there's some customization that you can do. And we've found out that you can actually customize it according to what you need. We've hacked a few things that have helped us and you'll figure out whatever those are as you travel. I still can't lift this scamp to get it onto the hitch, but aside from that, this is manageable by anybody. Some of my family members have really large RV trailers and they're great. They're great fun. Everybody can fit in them. We have a great time. So there's no knocks against those, but to get those hitched and traveling properly and everything secured down is an event. I mean, you're going to have that with any kind of trailer or RV that you have, but with the scamp, it's simple. We keep everything in here that we're going to take with us. The beds are already usually made. I'm washing the bedding right now, so they're not made right now. And then you can just throw your clothes in the, the upper storage areas and you're ready to go. I asked my kids what the pros to the scamp were and they responded with, they loved the bunk beds. So um, the bunk beds are a big hit. My husband and I tried to sleep in them. My husband said he felt like he was in a casket on the bottom and on the top, because it's curved around the front, whereas the the bed behind us that we sleep in isn't as curved. He didn't fit as well. And my son does fall out of the bottom bunk pretty regularly and then ends up back in bed with us, but I don't mind that either. So speaking of my kids loving the bunk beds, a pro for me is that my kids are right next to me. I can physically touch them at all times when I'm in here. And that might be a con at some times, but my kids are only gonna be this small for such a limited amount of time. And they are forced to be close enough to me to touch me and usually are touching me. And again, this sometimes is unwanted, but you know, when I look back on this, I, I love having my babies close to me. Another pro of Scamp is that the company is pretty responsive. We've had quite a few issues with the Scamp, which I'll talk about in a moment, but the company has been very much willing and ready to help us. It's nice to have a company that you know will support you if you've got problems. Another thing that we've really liked about having a Scamp is you can park this thing in any camping spot. You can park this thing in any parking lot. You you can park this thing anywhere. It is not huge and difficult to get somewhere. My husband has perfected backing into spaces. I have not even tried it once, so I have no idea how it probably, I'm not the best driver anyway, so probably not great, but it's nice to be able to fit anywhere. We fit in tent spots many times because a lot of RVs can't and we don't mind boondocking and um, it's been really, really nice. The You got a lot more options that way. Now this could be a pro or a con and it has been both for us, but the Scamp is a conversation starter. We have, I don't think ever been anywhere where somebody has not commented on the Scamp, anywhere. When we were on our big family two week cross country trip, we landed on top of a mountain and I am not joking you. We were starving and had not eaten and the kids were crazy and my son sprayed bug spray into his face and we were trying to clean him up. It was kind of a nightmare and every person on that mountain, and I mean every person, came to talk about the scamp to us at that moment, from the moment we got there. So if you want people to talk to at a campsite, take a scamp. So the last pro is resale. So a lot of RVs, just like cars, you drive them off the lot, they lose value pretty much instantly. And I'm sure we will lose some value in this, but my husband and I were looking for scamps for, for months and could not find them because they were selling instantly once they were listed. But I have seen people making money off of their scamps. If they had like an older one and they're selling it now, they're making some bank. So I don't expect to make money off of this, but I don't expect to lose as much as I would on, you know, some other trailer. And that's only if we sell it. There's not a lot of RVs or trailers that do have a high resale. There are some, of course, um, but I would count Scamp as one of them. Okay. <laughs> 
The list of cons is actually pretty short, so that should say something as well. The first con is these are expensive for what they are. My family members have, one of them has an E-Pro and it is awesome size. You can sleep four people in it. It's got an awesome kitchen. It's got a full bathroom with a shower and all that. And they paid almost a little bit less than what we paid for ours. So you can absolutely get a bigger one for the same price or less than a Scamp. It is expensive. And then with COVID and demand and nostalgia and shortages nationwide of pretty much everything, the price has increased drastically, even since we bought ours. For what this is, I feel like it's pretty expensive. If you're willing to pay the price like we were, then who cares? Our desire to escape the confines of COVID isolation were greater than our care about our future retirement. So it kind of just depends on what your you know, values are. Another problem that you'll notice, and I don't know if you've noticed it while I've been filming this, but this thing I'm barely moving and this, the scamp moves, man, like it, it's got some bounce. And even with the, the back supports down and the front support, it doesn't seem to matter. Like this just bounces often. Now this has been kind of a major con for us and pretty frustrating. We have had many, many problems with this camp. Now I heard the first year of any RV or trailer ownership is the year of problems. And so, I mean, I kind of understand that, but the stuff that we've had to do to this has been pretty annoying. Did we buy a lemon? Is it a lack of quality control at, at the scamp factory? I, I don't know what it is, but we have had to do do an enormous amount of stuff for one year of use. And you can see back there, I still don't have the door fixed back on there because they sent us the wrong size. So we're gonna have to, I don't know, sand it down. I'm not sure what we're gonna do yet. But so stuff like that is annoying. That door just fell off. The door down here fell off. The battery like exploded. The water tank leaked all over and while we were boondocking so not only were we out of water but then we were also cleaning up a mess with towels we couldn't really sacrifice because we needed to use them for our bodies and the door wasn't closing properly they had big gaps so like bugs and animals could get in so again i don't know if that's just normal um but it is a con in my book another con and this is this is not noticed by me because i am 5'2 but my husband is 6'3 and the poor guy cannot stand in here there's not a lot of places that he does fit comfortably but that is a con if you have somebody who's tall or your family are you know taller than people like me then uh, it might be a con for them another con is that this baby is small you can't fit extras I look at that as a pro because you can't fit extras but if you need to bring something that you cannot fit because of weight or size you just have to leave it it can be a con if you're somebody who likes to bring a bunch of stuff with you now this has not happened yet but we have a camera on this at all times because it is so small this thing is light anybody could steal this so we have a tiny little lock that pretty much does nothing it's just kind of a deterrent and a camera on the scamp to make sure nobody you know ganks it in the middle of the night but this is light so it could definitely be stolen there's no doubt in my mind i think you could probably find them easily because it's a jelly bean rolling down the highway and that's kind of unusual but you know you never know another con is they recently redesigned the door it used to be curved which looks really cool but it screws on from the outside so you could just easily break in by unscrewing the door but also it was flattening after a certain amount of years the fiberglass wasn't staying curved so they made a new flat door which seems like a great idea but um, we've already had to take ours back to Minnesota to the to the scamp factory to have it professionally fixed and it's already still coming apart like my husband's gonna have to screw it back in he's gonna try and figure something out it's kind of annoying because you need a door and you need it to close properly the door design is definitely a con and really the last con is that you don't have a lot of storage there's the cabinets they could have probably designed these cabinets better for the amount of stuff so the so our scamp can sleep four and it doesn't have a bathroom we've got the portable toilet but it doesn't have a bathroom so I feel like they probably could have made better use of the storage space available for clothing and food and other stuff that you might need like that. It's not a lot of storage. Overall, it's it's been sufficient for us. We took it for two weeks. I, I only packed five days worth of clothes at a time and we were gone for 14 days. I feel like that was sufficient, but that took a lot of extra preparation on my part in order to make sure we had what we needed and could fit it. The storage space is a con, but not one that's, you know, a deal breaker. All right. So those are the pros and cons of the 2021 13 foot scamp trailer. I can't say that we'll have this forever, but for the time that we've had it so far, we really have had a blast in it. And anytime I get frustrated and you know, say I'm ready to throw in the towel, my kids remind me how much they love it. If you have the money and have the desire, uh, it's a great investment and uh, I think you'll get a lot of joy out of it. <laughs>